Hey everyone, it's Laura, uh, Laura Claire on Ravelry at, and Laura.Claire. Yeah, I think I got that the right way around. Laura Claire on Ravelry and Laura.Claire on Instagram. Um, it's another episode of Desert Knits. I thought I would take my introduction outside. Oh, here comes the wind. Hopefully, you can still hear me. Um, where you can see we have pepper plants and eggplants. Uh, getting used to being out here um, this morning we prepped a bed so we can actually plant those this week I think Ty is planning on doing that tomorrow morning uh, we have radishes and all kinds of lettuces tomatoes are already in the ground basil um, fennel everything I'll put up a whole new list on my Ravelry profile page um, I think that we have 14 different varieties of heirloom tomatoes and a good six or seven different varieties of sweet and hot peppers. Um, those are our favorite things to grow. We do preserve a lot of those things, so they get the most real estate in our yard. Um, it's too hot this afternoon to really do much yard work. I think it's supposed to top out around 90 degrees today, 86 to 90, uh, which is a good 15 degrees warmer than it typically is this time of the year, um, but it makes for a good gardening season. Anyways, I have a lot to talk to you guys about today, and I'm going to move back inside, so I'll resume in just a minute. Hello again! I'm back inside, and as you can see, I do have a visitor. I'm not sure if she's going to want to hang out for very long, or sit on the shoulder and eat, or just explore. She does a lot of this. She enjoys being inside clothing for some reason. <laughs> Anyways, um, a little bit of podcast fun news uh, before I get into works in progress and that kind of thing. Um, Warrior Camp. We have a Ravelry group. Feel free to come join us. Uh, it's going to be June and July. You're going to have a fitness challenge as well as a crafty challenge. All crafts are welcome. I mean, if you want to have daily scrapbooking challenges, that would be acceptable. Um, we're not going to discriminate on crafts. Do you want it? No. Uh, all levels of fitness are welcome and all levels of crafting. So if you want to challenge yourself with something brand spanking new, that would be cool. Hey, we don't want your butt. There we go. Um, we are looking for prizes right now if you want to donate a prize. Patterns are a quick and easy one. Uh, and we're hoping to do weekly prizes, so patterns would be really easy for that. So if you're a new designer or wanting to try and increase, you know, awareness of your designs, this might be a good way of getting some recognition. I don't know what she's doing. She's brooksing. <laughs> um... So yeah, come join us for Warrior Camp. It'll run June and July. I think I already said that. Now I don't remember. Um, and I'm going to start on works in progress. So you've seen my uh, Dance Macabre shawl a couple times now. And I am so close to finishing. I have this much of the bind off left. And here is the rest of the shawl. The wrong side is facing you guys. And I just dropped my ball of yarn. So let me see. Starts off with some garter stitch. And I do have beads in here. And then we move into some lace. I really now that I can see all of the lace, don't fall, 
it's, I really like it. I really couldn't see it at all, like at all, bunched up on my um, needle. My needle is a whopping 24 inch circular, I think it's Addy, or not Addy, uh, yeah, Addy. Um, but yeah, 24 inches. It is a US size 6. Sorry, I don't know the millimeter sizing on that. But this is the yarn that I dyed with dandelions. Crouton has decided to explore. I'm going to bring her back since I don't have my attention entirely on her. So this is the yarn that I dyed with dandelions. So it's a really nice, subtle yellow, yellowy kind of green tint, depending on the light. Um, yesterday, I was at the library because it was, um, I, there's a local fiber guild here, Desert Fiber Arts, and once a year we have fiber with a twist. So it's a spin-in. The one here, it, it's pretty small. There are some that are quite large. Um, but the one here is kind of small. I brought it that shawl yesterday. There are a lot of people who are in the group um, who do natural dyeing or, you know, just any kind of dyeing. We, once a year in June, we also have uh, dye in the park. So I think, um, I don't think I'll be working that day, so I think I'll probably actually be able to participate this year, which is really exciting. Um, but I spent most of my time NWRSA, uh, Northwest Regional Spinners Association. We are, um, each guild that goes, well, pretty much each guild that goes, I think, makes something for the people who participate or register in uh, classes and stuff. So this year, our, our uh, little thing is a charm bracelet. So I helped put all kinds of little charms on the jump rings and made a little sample one. I don't actually have all of the charms um, that will be uh, available for the charm bracelet. The idea is that each vendor is going to have a charm that you can go pick up um, from their little shop display thing and hopefully drive some vendor sales so that it makes it worth it for them to be there. Um, but everyone who registers is going to have uh, a bracelet and it's going to come with the little spinning wheel and then you're going to walk around and collect... Sorry, she's decided to explore. Oh, we're losing things. Losing things. <laughs> Um, collect little charms and put them on the charm bracelet. There are some quite large charms, so for the dainty little chain that I made the display for, only going to use the little charms. Um, but yeah, everyone that I showed the shawl to was really impressed with the fact that I dyed the yarn using dandelions. They didn't figure that it would get that color. Um, I think I'm going to put her up. She's getting a little squirmy. Trying to explore a little too much. Alright, so I swapped out Crouton for Pierogi, so you can meet more of my fur babies. She's a little agouti Dumbo Rex. She's very cuddly. Pierogi! Do you wanna? There you go. No? <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. So close to finishing that shawl. Uh, I will be finishing it today and blocking it next weekend because ten and a half hour work days don't really make much sense for blocking. Uh, now, the socks that I showed you last time from the Seven Sisters Arts Meridian in the Cripple Creek color, this stuff here. Um, I have made some progress. 
I think that I was about here when I showed you last time. I don't really remember. So I have completed quite a bit more of the leg. Um, you can see I actually messed up down here. But I don't mind. I can live with it. Oh. Um, I actually really enjoy this pattern, even though there is quite a bit of cabling and it's taking more time than I was really expecting by looking at the picture. Um, I think I'm going to do one more pattern repeat and then move on to the heel. But the pattern is from Soctopus. I really like this, all of the patterns from this book. Go back up there. There we go. Um, some of them I think I've actually knit twice. And this is the Mince Pie Mayhem pattern, which you can't really see, but, yeah. no, I can't tell what I'm showing you, but Mince Pie Mayhem, um, I am a huge fan, like I said, of this book. I've done most of the top-down patterns, and I haven't done any of the toe-up. I'm not a huge fan of the toe-up sock um, construction. Just to say that I finished all of the patterns in the book, I'm going to break into the uh, toe-up stuff eventually. Probably sooner rather than later. Um, and then I showed you guys last time that I was planning on working on spinning a particular braid from Northbound Knitting. Um, I'm spinning on my little Jenkins that I keep in my little Tupperware thingy. So this is my Jenkins Lark or J, depending on which uh, shaft you put the arms on. I think this is on the J shaft. It's the shorter shaft. I can't remember which one is which. Uh, but it's spinning up very nicely. I really enjoy the way that the fiber feels. And despite it being from, what was this one from? 2013, I think that despite it having been from a couple years ago at least, um, the fiber, sorry, she's walking around on my keyboard. The fiber is not at all compacted from being stored, which is very nice. Oh, good job. You dropped all of your treats. Uh, so most of this I have spun on breaks and stuff at work. I have finished one turtle. Um, I didn't remember to grab it before I came in here. But I did finish one turtle. I'm on my second. Um, yeah, it'll probably take me a little while to get through it just because I have only been working on it at work, but that's okay. Where are you going? Alright. Say bye, Crouton. Or Pierogi. Bye, Pierogi. Gonna put her. Alright, so that is all of my works in progress. I have no finished objects to share. Uh, though that shawl is coming really close to finished. Um, now on to some stash. So, uh, I organized a little mini skein swap for the Snow Leopards group uh, for, for winter camp. The W's in winter camp and warrior camp are going to trip me up, I'm sure. Um, and I actually swapped with two people. Uh, one person I hadn't heard back from her for her address, uh, so I paired people up and then got a hold of her, got her address, and we swapped with each other. Um, she sent me a lovely little Jimmy Beans um, beanie bag full of little bits. I really like some of the speckly ones. I don't have any idea at all what these yarns are, but I don't really care. They're quite pretty. Um, I think she gets my 
my color scheme very well. There's some blues and purples, pinks. I'm not normally a huge fan of orange, but I actually quite like this one. Um, and then she also sent me some tea, which I've already had. They were quite tasty. <laughs> Uh, and this skein of Knit Mona uh, Bright Bright Pink. I don't know if you guys can read that. Bright Pink. I love this pink. This is my favorite pink. Um, Sakya. Uh, I sent her a little skein of yarn and some minis and you know just the basics for what the mini swap was uh, it was only supposed to be you know four to six minis um, and a card essentially any extras were optional um, and then I also swapped with Ren who she's one of the other organizers for um, or hosts for uh, Warrior Camp and she sent me we decided to uh, up the size of our minis and up the number of minis as well as send a little extra. Uh, so she sent me 12 minis in an egg carton. They are little mini eggs of yumminess. Each spot is numbered. I don't want to tip them all out on the floor. But you can see, ooh, there we go. They are all numbered in there with uh, a corresponding card where she has written, you know, what they are. Uh, so I don't remember what this one is, but I love the colors. And I know it is number seven. Let's see. Volan Vine Blitzed Base and Colorway Deck the Halls. I think I'm probably going to order one of these at some point or find one somehow because it is pretty. I really like it. Um, and then she also sent me some tea uh, as well as a bag of cranberries, blueberry flavored cranberries. I have been using those on my salad, they're delicious. Uh, and the most amazing smelling peppermint soap. I love peppermint soap. I, it's my favorite. <laughs> I think it is the best smell you can have in the shower. Aside from maybe rosemary, which is my shampoo. <laughs> um, and then I follow Hot Knit Yarn on Instagram. And on one of the days that she was dyeing a bunch of stuff, she posted a picture of some yarn still in the dye pot, still totally immersed in dye. Um, and I commented saying, I want one of those whenever it is available for sale. Um, so I ended up, it was what, four days later or something? Two or Three or four days later, she got sent me a message on Instagram and said, Hey, this is the yarn that you commented on. Do you still want one? So I got one. It is beautiful. Um, she, I think in the picture, it was a singles base as well as the uh, tweed sock base. So I picked the tweed sock base. So it's a little more universal uh, of a yarn. I can use it on socks if I want to, or I can use it for a hat or mittens or a shawl, whatever. But I love all of the colors. They're so pretty. I don't have any idea what I'm going to do with it at all. I just really like it. I decided to spend my yarn budget on it. Um, and it is Rooftop Sunset. Uh, it's 85 Superwash Merino, 15% Nylon Tweed. So, I really like a lot of the colors that she does. I have, I've used 
two of her skeins, hand dyed skeins before, and I think I have, including this one, now I think I have two or three more in my stash. Um, yeah, I really like the colors that she does. And that is it for yarny stuff. I know this is a lot of little segments, um, but I am going to put you on hold again and go grab something that I forgot from out in the other room. Okay, I'm back. Um, there are, obviously I'm quite active on the days when I run, but the days that I don't run, the days that I have off, I kind of, I don't feel like I'm hugely active, um, or, you know, spend most of my day napping, uh, sitting on the couch and knitting, spinning, whatever, out in the garden on my knees weeding instead of actually walking around and uh, going for walks in the evenings with the dogs, that kind of thing. So I've kind of played around with the idea of getting one of the activity trackers, you know, up, uh, or the, the Jawbone Up things, the Fitbits. Um, I have a Garmin Forerunner watch for tracking all of my stats for running. Uh, so I kind of waffled about the idea of getting one. I have a watch for running. I don't really need a watch to keep track of all of that stuff, but it would be nice to have the step counter kind of concept um, for the days that I'm not running. So I went to Target and found something on clearance and ended up getting it. It's one of the little misfit flash activity trackers. It was on clearance for 15 bucks. I figured, hey, 15 bucks, that is not a huge amount of money for something that I can't decide if I want or not. So I've been using this and so far very interesting things have come of it. Uh, yeah, it turns out the days that I am not at work and don't have a run planned, I don't really do anything. And I don't know if that's a bad thing. <laughs> um, so for instance, today, here's my little, oop, now it's showing you the time. The little activity tracker thing. I'm not even a quarter of the way through what my daily goal is. But Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I doubled. I did double of what my daily goal was. <laughs> so I don't know. I think I'm probably okay. Um, and the sleep tracking thing, I don't have any idea how it does it. I don't really know how it decides if you're awake or you're asleep. But it's been some interesting data. There are some nights when I will be in bed and feel like I'm asleep for three hours. And then I wake up and my watch shows that I was asleep for seven hours. Um, I struggle sometimes with staying asleep all night. So it's it's it'll be interesting to see if I use this consistently and if it shows me data that um, can pinpoint, you know, on those nights where I feel like I'm only asleep for a short amount of time, why I'm only asleep for a short amount of time. We'll see where it goes. I may end up just tossing the thing in the goodwill pile because it was 15 bucks and I don't really want to use it anymore. Something. Um, the other things that I found, the local Hastings had a clearance sale. So all of the clearance books were 99 cents plus 30% off on top of that. So, you know, 70 cents for a book. I found one of my favorite cookbooks. Uh, my stepmom has this cookbook and I think I have half of it uh, photocopied. <laughs> Maybe not quite half, but I have a good portion of this book photocopied and in a three ring binder. So I thought it would be a good thing for me to finally have my own copy that I can make notes in and uh, get all dirty 
from using it in the kitchen. And then, because I love bread, and because I love baking bread, I found this. Uh, it, it was not on the clearance thing, but it was a whole $1.50. So, it'll be interesting. I kind of flipped through it and looked. There's some basic recipes, and then there are things. A couple years ago, I made... Um, oh, what are they called? The Swedish cardamom rolls. So now I have a real recipe for Swedish cardamom braids. Rather than, oh hey, this looks interesting, let me try my own spin on it. So, yeah, that'll be fun. Um, now, on to running. I ran about 35 miles in the last two weeks. Um, and that includes taking some time off because I did something to uh, my left knee on one of my long runs. Um, so, last weekend was Ty's birthday. So, we went down, I got him a pair of rollerblades. Um, we went down to the river. There was a fun run thing. Uh, it was a donation for um, hemophilia research. That blood clotting disorder thing. Uh, so I ran nine miles in the fun run thing and he rollerbladed with me. He was, of course, on rollerblades, so like way ahead of me for most of it. He skated with me for a mile, maybe. Um, and then, you know, would go back and forth between me and aid stations or a ways up the trail and kind of cheer me on. And it was a lot of fun. Um, but I jumped up two miles beyond what my recommended or my scheduled long run was supposed to be that day. So it was pushing a little more than I probably should have. You're only supposed to increase 10% of your mileage each week in order to prevent injury. Eh. When you're supposed to run seven miles and do nine instead, eh. most of the time that wouldn't have bothered me, but um, I ran extra that week before, um, an extra day two days actually, because I got him rollerblades and we wanted to, he wanted to go use them. So I did uh, five miles the day before I did the nine miles. So maybe not the brightest idea, but I did it. Uh, I finished my nine miles in just over an hour and a half, an hour and 34 minutes and some odd seconds. So I was pretty happy with my time, considering I walked a good portion of it. Maybe not a good portion of it, but I walked for more than I typically would. Um, so on the following Monday, I went out for only like two and a half, maybe three miles. Uh, and then I took Tuesday and did cross training. Wednesday, I decided I didn't want to run. My knee was hurting. So Thursday after work, I went to the gym and ran four and a half miles on the treadmill. I hate running on treadmills. Treadmill running is something that I'm going to have to do just because middle of the summer there are going to be days when I don't get out early enough for it to uh, be possible for me to run in anything less than like 70 degrees. Um, it's really only coolest in the very early mornings in midsummer here and even then it's really it can be really hot. Uh, so treadmill running is unfortunately going to be incorporated in my training. I'll probably use the stair thing at the gym uh, for some of the days just so I can say, yeah I did hills on the stair stepper machine thingy. Um, yeah. Uh, but since Thursday I haven't actually run. So I skipped, uh, let's see, Friday is supposed to be my day off. So Thursday I ran, Friday I took the day off, Saturday I took the day off, today I took the day off. I will run again tomorrow morning and see how my knee feels after my run. Right now it feels fine. Like I feel like I could go out and run and be perfectly okay tomorrow. 
but I don't want to push it. I am doing um, training for a full marathon, so I don't want to end up hurting myself early on in training and fighting the injury for the entire training and then ending up not running in the marathon or, you know, not being able to finish if I start. Uh, so this week I'm hoping that training will be back on track. Uh, tomorrow morning I'm going to wake up extra early so that I can go down to the river with Ty and he can rollerblade with me while I run. We'll see how well that works out. I'm not a morning person <laughs> at all. I prefer to stay in bed until the last possible second. Um, there have been times when I haven't gotten out of bed for work until 8 and I need to leave for work by 8.25. So, uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be interesting. Um, and I'm going to try to incorporate more stretching or more yoga into my um, training just because my lower back and upper shoulders right here have been aching and some of that can be from holding too much tension while you're running. So I'm going to, I'm going to try to do um, yoga or s stretching or whatever um, probably three times a week and see how I feel in a couple weeks about uh, the little random muscle twinges um, from holding too much tension while I'm running and I'm gonna work on my running posture. Uh, so it was wonderful talking to all of you. If you need to get a hold of me, I will be making a Ravelry group, uh, but you can always find me on Ravelry as Laura Claire and on Instagram as Laura.Claire. Happy knitting. Have a wonderful couple of weeks.